so welcome yeah we're going to focus on um, so in, in this uh, th this begins a, a new series of explorations in particular we're going to be exploring silos theorem so uh, there's some dude called silo no idea where he came from but the bed is his mathematician so some theorems in abstract algebra called silos theorems uh, or is it one who knows well we it's an that's why it's an exploration so we're, we're finding out what what's happening so I mean one of the theorems seems to be that uh, if if we have some group and the order of the group equals to P to the alpha times some M right where uh, GCD of P and M equals to 1 that is if P and M are relatively prime have no factors in common then the order of H sorry then there exists some subgroup H of G such that order of H equals to P to the alpha here alpha is being taken to be greater than or equal to 1 is the idea. So, okay, let, let, let's restate this without too many words. Suppose we have some group G, okay? We don't know much about our group except that the order of this group, the size, the number of elements in the group is P to the alpha times some M, right? So what's an example of that? For instance, 2 to the 3 times 4 <laughs> times 7. This could be an example of a of a group of this type because think about it. It has well, it's of the form p. What would p be? Would p be two? What about alpha? Alpha is three. M is seven. Is two relatively prime to seven? That is, do, do two and seven have any factors in common? Well, other than the other than one, of course, right? So, but are they relatively prime? Well, sure. So this would be an example of a group that's of the form p to the alpha times m times m think the name for this is called silo subgroups but who knows we'll, we'll, we'll find out eventually so all right that's what we have now and we're saying so long as we have a group of this form p to the alpha times m then we're guaranteed of something we're guaranteed that there's going to be some subgroup h of g there's going to be some h subgroup of g and this subgroup is going to have some interesting property it's going to be such that the order of this subgroup has to be of the form p to the alpha the order of the subgroup has to be p to the alpha right so this seems uh this seems quite confusing well why must there be a subgroup of order p to the alpha right so we have a series of questions here that are bugging us one of them is okay fine suppose we have a group of o suppose that the order of the group is actually p to the alpha times m and indeed sure gcd of m and gcd of m and p equals to one they're relatively prime okay so what right what's so special about this that's the first question is like uh put it in bracket and maybe even label it with orange with with with, with purple and say so what right what's the consequence what's so special about having a group that's of the form p to the alpha times m times some m where P and M are relatively prime? That's the first question. Another question is, well, okay, from this information, we're somehow supposed to conclude, uh, let's go back to normal color, <laughs> normal, sure. Right. We're supposed to conclude that, well, there's actually some H subgroup of G, right, such that order of H equals to P to the alpha, right? Well, a couple of questions are raised again, right? Well, what questions could you think up here? Well, I mean, one question we're wondering about is, well, okay, one is, what's so special, what's so special about having a subgroup of order P to the alpha? What's so special about having an order of P to the alpha, right? What's so special about having a subgroup that's whose order is P to the alpha? Another question may be, well, how do we show, right? How do we show that the group has a certain order? 
how to show that a group has a given order right in what ways can we show that a group has a given order what are the mysteries does this raise for us well how do we show that a group has how about how to show that a group has order p to the alpha to some power right so how would we show that a group has has an order which is a prime power right that's those are those are all questions that are begged by this problem can you think of another question that this question is this problem is bringing to us well maybe what if p and m were not relatively prime what would happen then why wouldn't not having why would having suppose m and p were not relatively prime why would that would would we still be able to have a sub subgroup of order p to the alpha you know that that's the question right. so another thing is if you notice for instance anything of the order p to the alpha times m is kind of like we've sucked out a prime and all of its powers and if that makes sense to you think about a number like 15 right 15 is what 3 times 5 so in a sense we've isolated 3 haven't we isolated 3 here? How about another number? Like, it's a 20. Well, how can we write 20? 20 is the same as 4 times 5. Otherwise known as what? 2 squared times 5. So, it doesn't it seem like we've taken 2 and its largest power and isolated them out and looked at what we're left with? We're calling what is left m and the prime and all of its powers have been taken to one side. So, question is, what's so special about isolating powers like this? Well, what's so special about that? You know, that's that's another mystery that is brought up by this problem. Um, so where to start? What uh, what question are we gonna start by tackling? Well, so it, typically it's a good idea to um, start with. The question that we're trying to prove. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's ask the question. Well, uh, how do we show that a given group? How do we show that a group? Uh, okay, sorry. This is um. Let's get the 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 the, the, the color stuff out of here. Back to reality. How do we show that? How do we show? that a group let's say g or whatever group h group m has order p to the alpha right. how would we show this or in particular how do we show that a group has any given order right well, what techniques do we have for instance if we wanted to show that a group has order let's say a group m has order x order let's say order R right what what are some of the techniques we know for doing this right. so for instance suppose we found suppose there exists some little m in m such that order of m equals to R right would we be able to conclude from here that that there is some subgroup of order R that is, well, consider the set m to the 0, m to the 1, m to the 2, all the way up to m to the r minus 1. Right. So, right. Right, let's consider that set right there. Is this a group? Right. Well, if it is a group, right, let's call it, I don't know, what, an, uh, subgroup, right? So, uh, Let's call it L. Let's say L. Let's say L. We think of this as a. So the symbolism for this is this. It means that L has been generated by the element little m, right? So is this a group? Um, let's see. Well, what would we need to show? All right. 
we just run out of time here so yeah we'll continue this exploration in the next video uh, thank you once again uh, thank you very much for uh, watching this video and yeah think about how you'd prove uh, so maybe, maybe let's restate the problem before saying goodbye um, how could we prove this statement that if we have some group G and the order of G equals to P to the alpha times some M where the P has been sucked out of the power that is the GCD we're gonna write GCD like this. the GCD of P and M equals to 1 that is P and M are relatively prime all of the P's have been sucked out of M you could think of it that way if you like well why does this does this guarantee that we actually have a subgroup H of G and that the order of H actually has to equal to P to the alpha right why is this is this true if it's true why is it true right please think about how you'd prove this statement and then yeah this is what this we're going to be preoccupied with this for un until we're completely stuck and have no idea how to proceed right so uh, thanks again for watching and uh, have a relentless week bye